today? We're so excited for this week because it's spiritual emphasis. We'll spend all week diving deeper into how to connect with God in the world around us. Yes, we'll be here multiple times this week. Tonight at 7.30, we will have the service, and tomorrow morning at 10.50, classes are canceled so that we can gather here again. Yes, if you want to know when services are, check out the Spiritual Life social media or the email that was sent to everyone. Academic engagement and student success is bringing back the creative writing workshops. All literary creatives, including students, faculty, and staff, are invited to join Dr. Searcy and Professor Anderson in developing sound writing techniques in a creative and supporting environment. So if you like writing, check out one of these workshops. Okay, guys, let's jump into worship. Go ahead and stand up.
Praise the Lord, praise the Lord. I tell you, if that don't bless you, your blesser is broke, all right? Welcome to Spiritual Emphasis Week, Swoo Warriors. This is a week that we set aside specifically to seek God, to pursue God, and we wanna consecrate ourselves right here at the beginning of this week. Let's consecrate ourselves. Father, in the name of Jesus, we set ourselves aside. We set aside our size as a community. We set ourselves aside as individuals. We set ourselves aside as teammates. We set ourselves aside as classmates. We set ourselves aside as roommates. We set ourselves aside as faculty and staff. We set ourselves aside and we declare today, right here at the beginning of Spiritual Emphasis Week, God, we want to see you move. We want to give you permission to do whatever you want to do in our lives. We ask this in the beginning of Spiritual Emphasis Week in the sweet and precious name of Jesus. Amen. I know there is peace within 
Jesus, I just thank you that you are here in this space right now. I thank you that your name is power, God. In your name there is healing, God, and we can declare your name over those things, God. I thank you that you are already moving in this space, Lord Jesus. 
Jesus, I just pray that you would meet us here, God, in a new way, in a fresh way. I pray that your presence would just fall fresh in this space, God. Would you prepare our hearts for what it is you need for us to receive, God? And I just pray that our hearts would be opened, our ears would be open, open God, to what it is you need for us to receive. Would you be with our speaker, God? Just speak through him. May it be your words through him and not his own. And I just pray that you would just be an open vessel. And I pray that we, we would receive. I pray all these things in your name. Amen. You guys can be seated. Well, happy Monday morning, everybody. Are you excited for Spiritual Emphasis Week? Yeah. Okay. I, I have the distinct pleasure and honor of introducing our speaker this week, uh, who is Paul Epperson. If you were here last spring for Spiritual Emphasis Week, he spoke with a group of people. Now we just have Paul for five services. So that could be a good thing. That could, I, I, I'm excited for him. Uh, Paul is one of my favorite people on the planet. He loves, Je there he goes, okay. He loves Jesus with all of his heart. Um, he's a speaker with Forge Kingdom Building Ministries, which means he travels all across the country and world and gets to speak uh, to different places, bringing the word of God. He also uh, is, has a special love for college students and currently serves at Columbia International University in their spiritual life department. And so he gets to do chapel services just like this, encourage students like you to walk in their faith. So um, he, his wife, Natalie, is currently uh, still in Columbia, not here with him this week, but he has five kids as well. Uh, I am excited for you to hear from Paul, hear his heart, um, and learn more about Jesus. He embodies everything that Jesus is. And so would you help me welcome Paul Epperson this morning? I love you. All right, how y'all doing this morning? Oh, come on, how y'all doing this morning? Okay, all right, look, we got to do a little, what I call a southern hallelujah. This is how you praise the Lord in the south, okay, because we in the south, amen. Okay, I was up in Michigan, they're like, what? Anyway, so here's how you praise the Lord in the south. I'll do it first, and if you don't mind, I invite you to do it with me the second time. Here we go, you ready? Southern hallelujah. Woo! Okay, on the count of three, all you got if something cracks up here, in the, I'm okay with that. All right, here we go. You ready? On the count of three, everything you got. One, two, three. Ooh. Ooh. That might be the best one I've ever had. I'm just going to tell you. Quint, thank you, my friend, for having me here. Michaela, uh, y'all, uh, my name's Paul. My wife's name is Natalie. She is the bling of the king, my heavenly honey bun, sanctified sweetheart. She's my Bible-believing baby. Come on now. I've uh, been married uh, 21 years. I know what you're thinking. I got married when I was 12, close enough. Uh, I got five kids, as Michaela said, from ranging from almost 16 to 5. So uh, it's an honor to be here. Y'all, it's so cool to be back at Southern Wesleyan. Um, I don't know if I've ever been on a stage that had a lightsaber cross. Like, it's like a, it's like a cross saber. You know what I'm saying? Like, Jesus get you. It's all good. Man, I love it. Hey, but it's the blue kind, so it's all good, right? <laughs> love that. Man, whoo. Well, if you got your Bibles real quick, um, I want to say this before I get rolling as you open your Bibles to Matthew chapter 9. I'll be in two places, Hebrews chapter 12, verse 2 real quick, and then we're going to be in Matthew 9, starting in verse 9, just for a brief moment in our time together. I want to just remind us of something this morning as we start off our week. I want to remind us. Now, notice I did not say I want to remind you. I want to remind us because as I look out over this place, I see brothers and sisters. I see people on a common journey. That we're all trying to figure this thing out. We're all trying to grow in our own way. We are all come from different walks of life, but we are all in this thing called life together. And so with that in mind, I want to remind us of something this morning. 
And as you're turning to your Bibles there, I, I want to tell you a little story. I told you I got five kids. <laughs> and I don't know why I just laughed at that. But anyway, I, all that means is we need to have, you know what, let's just pray for me right now. Never get, <laughs> no, I'm not joking. Anyway, so, uh, but Levi, my oldest son, he's 12 now. So a few years ago, how many of y'all ever remember seeing the, uh, the live action version of Mulan? Anybody, some of that? y'all know what I'm talking about? If you don't, it's okay. It's on Disney+. Plus. But it's like a cartoon, re- uh, it's a live action remake of a cartoon movie, Mulan. And we're sitting there a few years ago, and we watched this movie. And in this movie, there are the bad guys, the people that have this thing called chi. You know what I'm talking about? I call chi. And what that means is like this supernatural power, I guess you could say, that, for instance, they could take off and they could run up and scale up a wall and, and get into a city. So they had a big wall. They could run up a wall, scale a wall, and get into the city. Well, after it's over, my son, Levi, he thought to himself, I got chi. And true story, by the way. And he takes off at a dead sprint through the living room, hits the kitchen, gets to the dining room, dead sprint, puts his foot in the wall, fully believing he had chi to scale that wall, and poof, foot goes right through the wall. And when I mean right through the wall, I mean right through the wall. I mean a huge hole. He comes up to me, and, and he goes, uh, hey, Dad, uh, I thought I had chi. Can you come here? So, so I go to the wall, and he goes, well, I thought I had chi. And I looked at him, and I went, well, at least you tried. You know? <laughs> I mean, and I said, but son, you ain't got chi. <laughs> I said, next time, go outside and chi the tree. Okay, that would be a little bit different. There's a dead one out there, and that will be a blast. Okay, um, But Levi, at that moment, thought that he could look and fix his eyes and turn to and look to Really, the invitation that the movie was giving him, he thought that he could model what he saw up there and that he could do what those people on the movies could do. Those were like the model that he followed, the the things that he fixed his eyes on and turned to in that moment. And in this case, in the end, it led to things that were broken and in need of repair. It makes a big difference in our lives, doesn't it? Who we are looking to, who we are fixing our eyes on, when it comes to our lives. And I have a question for us this morning. Who or what are you, are we, am I, who are we, who are you fixing your eyes on, looking to this morning? Is it the movies or your maker? Is it this top athlete or is it almighty God? Is it the screen? Or yourself, because that's what happens. Or your Savior. Who are you fixing your eyes on this morning? Not yesterday, not tomorrow, but today. Who are you looking to in your life? And I'm going to be honest with you. As I look through the Bible, as I look through this, as I think about my own life, both past and today, there's been a lot of different types of people that I've looked to in my life. Some good, some not so good. There's been a lot of things that I thought I could handle. Some good, some not so good. There's been a lot of things that did buy for our attention. Can I get a witness? There are six trillion things every single day that are vying for our attention. Look here, look here, look here, look here, look here, look here. Look to me, look to me, look to me, look to me, look to me. And I don't know about y'all. I'm exhausted. So there has to be something outside of this to center us to, so that we can begin to make sense of things. Because I'm very easily distracted. Y'all, no, probably not y'all. I'm very easily distracted. I'm, I mean, I was looking on the things on the wall a minute ago, and I'm like, is that fire coming down there? I literally thought, literally, when we're worshiping, I'm like, Jesus, help the wall. I mean, I was, I was distracted, but a good distraction. I was good. I was okay. I'm okay with that. I'm okay with it. You know, there's lots of great people in your life even today. I think about Mark. How you doing, man? I love you, bro. Man, you're my hero. I think about Mark, Quinn. I think about most of all, worst is Tapper. He might not be here. Tapper. I think about Brent. I think about all these people here that you have. Phenomenal. Michaela. Phenomenal people that you can look to. I think the Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 11 that we, we can imitate people's lives. We need to imitate their faith. Oh, praise God for people like that. You've probably had people in your life that you could imitate that were wonderful, that helped you stay focused. But there's only one person, only one person as I'm looking, 
Only one person, as I look through this, out of all the phenomenal people, the Bible not only commands us, but invites us to fix our eyes on, to look to. And that's in Hebrews chapter 12. Look what it says here. It says, therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and sin which so closely ensnares us and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us. Here it is. You ready? It makes it simple. I don't know about y'all. When you go to a restaurant, how many of y'all like love 6,000 options? Some of y'all do. I know you do. You're like, man, I want to go. I like two. Like, give me one. Like, tell me, this is, this is like a hamburger place. I want the best hamburger. Like, just give me one option. Here's the one option. God makes it so simple for us. He says here, looking to Jesus, fixing your eyes on Jesus. Look to him. Look at him. The author and perfecter of our faith, who for the joy set before him endured the cross, despised the shame, and sat down at the right hand of God. There's only one person that the Bible invites us to look to, to fix our eyes on, and that's Jesus. And I hope that this week, I hope today, that you have the freedom and the permission to learn. Let's learn together how we do that because there's so much distraction out there. There's so much distraction within and so much distraction without. But we're learning to fix our eyes on Jesus. Y'all, there came a time in my life, if I'm just, I probably shouldn't say this, Michaela. I probably should not say this. I'm going to apologize ahead of time. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Thanks for laughing at that. I appreciate that. Nobody else did. It wasn't meant to be funny. I'm sorry. I got so overstimulated with the how-tos when it came to the faith. I got so overwhelmed with all these methods. And I'm not down in the methods out there. Here's 12 steps to have a better life with Jesus. Here's, I praise God. There's tons of great things out there. But there's so many things out there that are trying to, how do you do that? Here's how to do it. Yeah. Finally, I, I kind of, as I'm looking at this, I'm going, I'm kind of overwhelmed. And if I'm honest, I kind of wanted to stop. I was like, man, this is overcomplicating following Jesus. Like, this is getting, like, too much of following Jesus. And so what I realized, man, is it possible that I was overcomplicating things and there was so much complexity of how you follow Jesus and how you grow in the faith and how you live, all this kind of how-to type of stuff, method type stuff, that, that God was not trying to make it more complicated for us. He was actually saying, Paul, you're not simple enough. You're trying to be overcomplicated and drawn all those places when it comes down to the real simple truth of just to fix your eyes on Jesus. It was really that simple. Like when I was a kid, I would always watch my dad, and I knew he was looking at someone a little higher than himself, but I was always wanted to be like him. I'd pull my socks up really high, you know, like when he was there, and then I'd eat my steak. Like if I had steak, I'd eat it well done because he did. I ate thousand dollars salad dressing because I wanted to be just like him. And all it was was just me looking at him, following and doing what he did. But when I look at Jesus right here, we're, we're, we're coming here. We're centering here. If I look to him this morning, what do I find Jesus all about? Like, that's the key. If I look to him, what is he all about? Because that's the reminder. I just need to know what he's like. I don't need to know what 6,000 people are telling me. I just need to know what he's like. And here's how he does things. You ready? (laughs) This is so simple. Whatever I see my father doing, I do it. Whatever I hear my father saying, I say it. That's how Jesus lives his life. If he heard his father say something, he said it. If he saw his father do something, he did it. So when we fix our eyes on Jesus this morning, what do we need to be reminded of? Well, here's what I think. You ready? Here we go. Matthew chapter 9. Here's the next passage. Let's look at Jesus together. As G- verse 9. As Jesus passed on from there, he saw a man named Matthew sitting at the tax booth. And, G- and Jesus said to him, follow me. And he rose and he followed him. And as Jesus reclined at the table in the house, behold, many tax collectors and sinners came and were reclining with Jesus and his disciples. And when the Pharisees saw this, they said to his disciples, why does your teacher eat with tax collectors and sinners? But when he heard it, he said, those who are well have no need of a doctor or physician, but those who are sick. Go and learn what this means. I desire mercy and not sacrifice, for I came not to call the righteous, but sinners. So if we're going to learn to look at Jesus and be reminded of what he's like this morning together... The first thing is this, is let's remember that Jesus is all about being up close. How many of us today, how many of us throughout our lives have felt like God is distant? 
that felt like, hey, we know that Jesus is up close, but it doesn't feel like he is. It doesn't seem like he is some of the times. How many of us seem like that Jesus doesn't really care about us? How many does it seem like for us that, yeah, we know that God, yeah, he wants to be, he loves us, all that kind of stuff, but that doesn't seem to be the reality that we live in every single day because of circumstances or other things. How many of us today, we know that, man, Jesus is, is maybe like this, but he just doesn't even seem real. Or maybe he seems a tad bit more academic than we would like, or maybe we would even say that, oh, this, Jesus is a little bit boring. But one of the things that the Bible tells us is that Jesus is God up close. As he goes up and he touches a leper and says, leper, and says the kingdom of God is at hand. As you watch what he does, he brings children up next to him. He, he says, children come and they would sit on his lap. And notice he never looks at the children and go, you're being an interruption to me. How many of you right now feel like you are an interruption to God? Feel like that your life and your problems and the things that you're, you may be going through, the things that maybe the, the joys that you want to share, like, God, thanks for this, that you feel like an interruption to God. But if we look at Jesus, that he's somebody that, that welcomes you into him. When the, when the, when the paralytic, when they, when they pulled the roof off over and they laid him down, he was sitting there teaching just like this. Imagine like if one of my kids or somebody came up and said, I got a need. We'd be like, whoa, 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 he's teaching. You can't go there. Don't be coming up next to Jesus. He's teaching. Jesus didn't do that. He never views you as an interruption to him because he wants to be up close with you. How many of us today would be something like, if we were, Michaela talking, oh, sorry, sorry, I don't mean to interrupt you. Sorry, sorry, I don't mean to interrupt you. <laughs> oh, we do that all the time. You are never an interruption to God. He loves being up close with you. No, 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 no. I know it's hard. You are never an interference and an interruption to God. He loves doing life together with you and being up close. He's not like, and I'm guilty of this sometimes, he's not like the parent in the park on the phone, and they're going, Mama, Daddy, Mama, Daddy, Mama, Daddy, look, 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 look. No, 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 no. Mama, Daddy, Mama, Daddy, Mama, Daddy, look, look, look. No, 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 no. What? But some of us think that's what God's like. Jesus loves being up close. That's why I don't think necessarily he just modeled something that's just on the stage. Though, praise God, man, the worship team and everything up here, phenomenal job. Leonard, an awesome job. Incredible job up here. But y'all, Jesus is not just someone who's just on a stage. And sometimes we have trained ourselves because of the screen. Praise God for the screens. We've trained ourselves to believe that Jesus is just up here. When, matter of fact, he's up close to you now. It doesn't seem that way. But Acts 17 says, if you just reach out to him, he's not far from any of us. Why? Because he is a God who loves to be up close. Now, I love you, but even right now, if my 5-year-old or my 16-year-old, almost 16-year-old, if they came up here and ran up on stage, I need you to understand, I love you with a deep passion with the love of Christ. And I hope we get to hang out some this week. But if they ran up on the stage right here, right now, to me, I need you to understand, and I do not apologize for this, I will stop talking to you, and I will pay attention to them. Because they're mine. They're my kids. And we need to be reminded. Guys, we need to be reminded. We do. Ladies, we need, you need to be reminded. We need to be reminded. But if I'm like that, how much more is the heart of God? to be up near to you. He loves being with you. He loves being up close. Because you can impress people from up here, but boy, do you impact people up close. I remember my papaw. Yeah, y'all know I'm from Mississippi. I got a papaw. My papaw. I remember when I was a kid, I'd spend the night at his house. He and mamaw. <laughs> and I'd spend the night at his house. And I remember 2.30 in the morning, I hear him shuffling, shh, 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 shuffling through to go 
have his 12th pot of coffee in the morning. I'm pretty sure Pap- Papaw's heart legitimately ran on coffee. Okay, anyway, but he was shuffling in there. And I remember I'd get up. I'm like, man, I, I love my Papaw. I want to go be up next to him. And I'd find him there with the Bible. But I remember, he worked in soul conservation, right? He would be, he, he, he's not like some person on the stage or anything like that. He worked in soul conservation. And he'd have his Bible open to the Psalms, you know, in the Bible. And he'd just be sitting there. And I'd watch him. He'd be doing like this right here. And he'd drink another pot of coffee. And he'd be like... And then he talked to me about the church. And then he talked, and nothing fancy, right? It wasn't like anything like he was like, whoa, it wasn't like this sermon. But here's what he didn't do. 2.33 in the morning, he didn't go, Paul, go back to bed. This is my time with God. He didn't say that to me. But I saw him open up to those psalms and just think about it and just have conversation with me. And he let me drink black coffee. That's why I drink black coffee today. Amen? Amen? You know what I'm saying? Would you like coffee with cream and sugar in it or black the way God intended it? Either way, be holy like the Lord. So I, um, but I, I remember in that moment, now, years and years and years later, in my highest of heights with, in my walk with God, to my lowest of lows, you know the books, the, the, the place that God continually brings me back to get to know him better, to fix my eyes on him, to look to him more? You know what it is? The Psalms. Because in that moment, I realized that God wasn't just trying to push me away, but God wanted to get up close. And that came through my papaw. And I'm sure you've had people like that in your life, too. I think Michaela's a phenomenal example of what they call incarnational ministry to realize that God loves being up close with us. And may we never forget that this is the heart of God, that he loves being with you. He loves being up close with you. And there's an invitation for us today to just look to him by faith. And not only that, But if we fix our eyes on Jesus, not only does he love being up close with us, that's the reminder number one. Number two is that he is the God on the move. Now, why is this important? Why would we fix our eyes on him? Because he gets to be up close. And whether we like it or not, there's one thing that our hearts long for more than anything else, and that's to be connected with God. We may not understand it. We may not not even believe it yet. But the one thing that God wants, one thing our hearts are made for, by him and for him, is to be connected with God. That's why Jesus came. He came to bring us to God. That's the whole point. But now, he's also the God, not just up close, but he's the God on the move. What does this mean? That means when you're hitting baseballs in the, in the, in the, uh, in the batting cage. Hey, any baseball players in here? Where are we at? Anybody? Yeah! Hey, I'm going to come hit baseballs, you guys, okay? Don't, well, don't look at my form. It's been a while. Okay, but when you're on the baseball field, when you're in the cafeteria, whatever you call that, when you're in the coffee shop, when you're in the chapel, when you're in your dorm, wherever you are, the Lord loves to be up close with you on the move. From the moment of the garden, to the tabernacle, to the temple, to you and me, the Lord says, I'm with you always to the ends of the age. He loves to be on the move with you. Everywhere your feet go. What if we began to look at everywhere that our feet go, we house the living God. How many, uh, if you're a believer in Christ, how, who's the oldest person in here that, that's a believer in Jesus? Anybody? Who, who wants to say that? Who's the oldest person that, that trusts in Christ in here? Anybody? Mark, I'm not going to say you out loud. It can't be you, man. Come on, it's got to be somebody older than Mark. Come on. Anybody? Uh, how are, uh, you've been following Jesus for how long? Woo! How about you, Mark? How about you, Mark? 41, 40 plus, 41. All right, how many of y'all have, come, have maybe come to the Lord in the last year or so? Like, if you trust in Christ in the last year or so? Anybody? Are you last year or so? Hey, oh, last year or so? All right, good. Here's what's crazy. If the Lord wants to be up close, right, if, if he's Emmanuel, God with us, if he's the God on the move, everywhere our feet go, our, our feet take us, if the earth is the Lord's and everything is in it, from the oldest believer to the youngest believer, meaning those who have been in the faith the longest and those who are just maybe semi-new to it, Each one of those people house the living God. And you house the living God inside of you. So that everywhere your feet take you, he's with you everywhere that you go. And every moment can be holy. Every moment can, can be set apart, regardless of where you are, regardless of what you're doing. Because Jesus wants to be up close to us. And he wants to know that he wants to be on the move with us as well. Now, you might look at this and go, Paul, I know this. Or, Paul, this is boring. Or, you fill in the blank. But I think that we rush towards things that are so complex. But I think we yearn for things that are really simple. I just need you to hear this morning. I need to hear it myself. 
that God is giving every one of us a daily invitation to be up next to him, to recognize him everywhere we go, and enjoy a life on purpose with him. That's his heart. That's his heart for you. That's his heart for me. And may we never forget it. And maybe, just maybe, as we're learning to fix our eyes on Jesus together this week, maybe, just maybe, like David would say in the Psalms, with our God, we just might be able to scale a wall and have an adventure with him. Just maybe. Let's pray. As we're praying, I'm going to ask you one question for myself and for you, for both of us. Who or what are you looking to and fixing your eyes on this morning? Because Jesus is inviting every one of us to turn from the things that grab our attention and just simply look to him by faith. Who or what are you looking to this morning? Who or what are you fixing your eyes on this morning? And maybe the song, turn your eyes on Jesus, look full in his wonderful face, and the things of earth begin to grow strangely dim in the light of his glory and grace. And maybe we would come back to the heart of worship, where it's not about us, but it's all about Christ. So why would we turn to Jesus? Because like, anybody, like no one else, he's the God who wants to be up close with us. And he is the God who wants to be on the move and go with us. So Jesus, we look to you this morning. I pray this week, God, that it is a, it's a great refreshing glance to you. It's a great invitation from you to fix our eyes on you, to look to you, to grow with you, to come to you just like we are. So Lord, thanks for seeing us. Thanks for wanting to be together. And I pray over every single person in this room that, Lord, that we together would grow, that, Lord, we'd be convicted in certain areas, that we'd hear your encouragement in other areas, that you'd refresh us in many areas, that we'd get your heart for things, that we'd spend time together with you, that we'd recognize you more in our lives, and that, Lord, you would raise up more kingdom laborers who turn our eyes to you. And Lord, we love you. In Jesus' name. And all God's people said, amen. You are dismissed. Have a great day. Love y'all.